Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about repairing the vintage Cambridge audio amplifier model A1. Now this suffers from a very common problem, is the audio output ICs burn up. Now it's not a big job changing the IC because if you look at it it's only got 9 pins. The big difficulty um, is actually finding an IC that's not a fake or a counterfeit or a sanded down one because if you look at the data sheet um, the IC was first produced in May 1992 so it's been out of production um, for more than 20 years so obviously with anything that's out of production it's very often counterfeited and here we have a, a genuine Philips article new old stock um, I'll just show you one of the things to look out for first so here we are, we've picked out on a page on eBay from one of the Chinese sellers uh, supposedly selling a TDA1541 Now if you look at it, um, for a start the white stripe's in the wrong place um, It doesn't have the Philips logo on it And also it doesn't say um, Taiwan as a manufacturing country So that's the one on eBay from a Chinese seller That is what, when the camera comes into focus, that is what a genuine looks like uh, you see it's got the Philips logo, it says Taiwan and the white stripe is a completely different place uh, to one on eBay so clearly a fake that and I've bought these before and they're just a waste of money all they do is we switch them on and they burn up straight away um, if you do manage to get one that's working uh, the chances are it'll be an old one that's been removed from a board, it's been cleaned up, it might work, it might not work. Even if it does work, because it's over 20 years old, it might only last five minutes. So I'm, I'm going to show you a solution to this little problem. So if we look here at the circuit diagram for the Cambridge A1 audio amplifier, the actual left and right channels are ridiculously simple, um, consisting of the TDA1541 and just a handful of parts around it so it shouldn't be too difficult substituting that IC with um, a different one that's in modern production so I've checked through some data sheets and I've picked out a good candidate that will replace the TDA1541 uh, now here's the data sheet for the TDA1541 um, the one I've chosen to do the job is not pin compatible and it also comes in a completely different package which means you're going to have to make a slight modification um, what I did, I mounted the chip on a piece of uh, printer circuit board and then fastened that to the amplifier so the one I've picked out um, is an LM3886TF now I'm using the TF one which is the fully insulated one because we don't need any um, we don't need any uh, mica washer behind it when we fasten it to the e-zinc and if you use a fully insulated one it makes fitting a lot simpler now as you can see it's in a completely different package and it's also got a different leg configuration so it won't fasten straight into the board the pins are completely different um, but it is possible to fit this and um, for the LM3886 um, it will give, a running to 28 volt supply into an 8 ohm load, 38 watts. Um, the TDA1541, 28 volts supply into 8 ohm, just 40 watts. So it's very, very similar. It's close. And what I would recommend you doing is do this modification on both the right and the left channel. And then the amplifier is completely balanced. You haven't got a different level in, in the left that you have in the right. So we move back over to the day sheet. I've examined the data sheets and it's almost pin compatible apart from one thing. Uh, the time constant circuit here that operates the mute that um, stops the uh, switch on pop. Um, we just need to change a few parts there and then we can use um, the LM3886TF in its place. Um, now rather than change the parts on the amplifier itself, um, these two parts here, to keep the amplifier original what I've done is I've left these in and we use a different pin out on here um, and the extra two parts we're going to need is a 100 microfarad capacitor and a 22k resistor um, and we're going to place them just there. So. 
rather than play about with the amplifier i've actually mounted these extra two parts on the little printed circuit board as you'll see so if you just give me a few minutes and i'll just show you the actual pin compatibility and i'll show you what you need to do to fit the lm3886 in place of the tda1541 now the lm 3886 is still in current production it's available at radio spares for about seven pound 50 plus VAT, which means if you buy it from rs components you're not going to get a fake and you could always keep a few in stock for future repairs so i'll move over here i've drawn a diagram of exactly what you do i'll hover the camera over this for a few minutes and then um, what you have to do is just stop the video and then you can write all these numbers down so that's the TDA1541 and that's the LM3886TF. Right, so I'll move over here. And on here you have the pin for the TDA and the corresponding pin on the LM. So it's pin 1 on the TDA um, now has to go to pin 10 on the LM. So I'll just hover over this slowly. You can stop the video and write all this down. And then we'll move over to here. Um, I'll just run through this slowly. Um, there's a couple of few, a few notes I've made here. So you need to make this following addition. Um, if you make it on the separate printer circuit board, you're in no way changing the parts on the amplifier board, which means at any time, if you do find um, a brand new genuine TDA1541 you can just take out the modification and drop the new IC straight in without doing anything else. So let's move on to what you need to do now. I'll do that slowly. So that's the first resistor you've got to add between pins 4 and 8 of the LM3886TF. Uh, and then you need a capacitor under a microfarad 63 volt with the polarity shown in the picture positive to pin 7 and negative to pin 8. And I'll just move back there and then you can freeze frame that when you write it down and um, that's all you've got to do really then you put these parts on the printer circuit board and just screw it to into the amp so if you watch the next part you'll see it done right so there we have the assembled pc board with the lm3886 on um, i've attached some flying wires I've, the wires are color coded so i know which uh, order they go in um, and I've used some pins on the end so we can solder straight into the into the circuit board. I'll give you a view of the top and uh, let's see how we go on. Right, so before we start, I'm just going to make sure that the amplifier is working on the good channel. Um, so what I've done is taken the old IC out, I've replaced the two fuses that were blown. Um, that's the modification ready to go in. I've set the amp up with a a pair of speakers and I've connected it to a, a vintage sharp tuner so we're just going to get all the slots switched on and just check out the amp first so that's the amp on switch the tuner on and I'll just give it a tune in there when you found out that we go is a drag murder mystery So there you go, um, the amplifier is working just on one channel because I've removed the faulty IC. So what I'm going to do now is fit the, um, the modified IC and we'll switch it on and see what happens. Right, so there we go, there's the, uh, the modified IC with little printer circuit board fitted. Um, just before I go drilling any holes in this heat sink, um, I've just fastened it on with a, onto the heat sink with a a pair of miniature mole grips so we can just um, test the amp and uh, run it through some more tests just to make sure everything's working okay and um, um, yeah well there's a picture of it just clamped on with the mole grips temporarily uh, eventually what I'll do is I'll drill holes in the heat sink to, so I can fasten it on um, 
and um, here you go then let's switch it on so first we'll turn on the amp and uh, I've got both speakers connected there's no unusual noise in the speakers we'll turn on the tuner oh, of course. And the road to hell it is said is go. with good intentions and just to, to show it's all working we'll turn the balance control next year seems to be paved with ever more That's ambitious that speaker. carbon reduction targets the prime minister tweeted a few hours ago that britain would cut carbon emissions from 1990 levels by 68 percent by 2030 the previous target was 57 percent at a virtual gathering of world leaders next week the pm said he would be challenging them so there you go that's all working and that's um, a solution to the problem of um, when you can't get the ic's anymore well there you go guys thanks for watching and um, i'll see you in my next video then